I'm going to show you how to use grid systems in Figma to create more professional designs quickly and easily. We'll also look at adding those grid styles to your Figma design system so you have global, reusable components across all your designs. Let's get started. So what is a layout grid? This is a good question. Think of the page you're designing for split into columns. Those columns guide where the elements of your design will sit. Because all the columns are spaced equally, this allows you to create uniform designs every time. You know exactly where the elements of your design should go. This really elevates the aesthetic of your designs, increasing harmony and consistency. It also ensures that when you hand over your designs to a developer, they're much more easy to build. So back in Figma, we've got our frame sizes set up, desktop, tablet, and mobile. I like to work with a varying amount of columns depending on screen size. Here are my preferences. So for desktop, I want 12 columns. I want 32 pixels margin, which is the space at the left and right of your screen. And then I want 16 pixels gutter, which is the space in between your columns. For tablet, I want eight columns with 16 pixel margin and eight pixel gutter. And finally, for mobile, because it's a smaller screen size, we only want four columns with 16 pixel margin and eight pixel gutter. So let's set up our first grid layout. If we select our desktop frame, slide over to the plus icon here next to layout grids, click that and where it says grid, hit this icon and change it to columns. Now we know what properties we want to input. So I'll put 12 columns in here. You can leave the type as stretch. That means that the columns will resize automatically depending on screen size. You can leave the width as auto. And we set margin to 32 pixels and gutter to 16. And that's your desktop grid set up. If we resize the screen here, you can see that the columns and the margins and the gutters all resize accordingly. So let's do the same now for the tablet and the mobile versions. We've already got our properties, so we'll just input those the same way as we did before. So you've got all three of your responsive layout grids set up. To test how effective they are, let's bring in those components we were playing with before. So if I drag my nav bar into this desktop frame, resize it, I can see that that fits perfectly now. I'll do the same with the hero banner. So I don't want this to span the entire width of the page. So I will choose 10 columns and stick that here. So we've got four cards and there's a little bit of maths we're gonna do here. We've got four cards and we've got 12 columns. We need to figure out how wide each card has to be to fit uniformly across the columns. So if we take 12, the amount of columns we've got, divided by four, the amount of cards we've got, we end up with three, which gives us the number of columns wide each card needs to be. So if we now resize the card to be three columns, all four of our cards should now fit uniformly across the design. And this concept works across tablet and mobile too. To maintain legibility, sometimes you may have to stack elements. For example, on this tablet view, all four cards probably would fit into one row, but they'd be very squashed. So what we can do is stack them two by two, like so. And the same concept again for mobile. We have even less real estate to play with here, so we'll stack them one on top of the other. So it's one column of four rows of a single card. And that's the concept of responsive design. And using a layout grid really helps you understand what sort of width you should be playing with depending on your screen size. Here's a quick tip for you. Sometimes the layout grids can get in the way these big red columns that overlay your content, especially if you're working with something that has color, makes it really hard to see what you're doing sometimes. But there's a quick keyboard shortcut for this. If you press Shift G, it will just turn off the layer grids, but they're not deleted, so you can hit Shift G again to turn them back on. This is a great way to flick between designing and actually assessing what you're working on. So we're almost there. There's one final step to make sure that your layout grids are available globally and become reusable. All you need to do is select the original frame that you set that layout grid on, slide over here to the four dots, click that and hit the plus button. Now give your layout grid a name, we'll call this one desktop, and do the same for the others. So tablet and mobile. Now publish your changes to your design system. So hit the Figma icon, select libraries, and then publish, and you're done. Let's test it quickly. So we'll set up a couple more frames, one desktop, one tablet, and one mobile. None of these new frames have any layout grids on them. So if we select the desktop size one, 
slide over to the auto layout section and select desktop, you can see that the style you set up is now available. Let's try it again for tablet and mobile. Boom. Grid layouts are an amazingly powerful way to ensure you maintain consistency in all of your designs. When you start working with responsive layouts, it ensures that every element you place on a page is in the right place. You know how it will behave and where it will sit. If you've missed my previous videos on Figma's design system, check them out here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.